celebrate a previous champion by distributing one of their Pokemon. And, uh, this time it is uh, the senior division. Insert this code Outburst Worlds 24 that will get you a special illustration rare pet that you can enter in the game as well to earn a platinum Gengar boost emblem. For one, we have a doozy for you that we are bringing to you on broadcast. We have Adam Sherfui versus Shohei Kimura. Championships between Adam Sherfui and Shohei Kimura. Let's see the sparks fly on that battlefield as we kick off the Pokemon World Championships 2024. Out here on the field for Adam, it is the Calyrex Shadow Rider paired up with that Rillaboom. And on the opposing side, a tried and tested duo in the form of that Incineroar and the Amoongus. There's a lot of fake out potential on the field right now. There is. We have the Rillaboom and the Incineroar that are both going to be packing that move, but it's going to be that uh, Rillaboom that's going to be taking that attack drop there from the Incineroar's Intimidate on the other side. Right away, though, the fact that Adam is led with the Shadow Rider Calyrex, he has a lot of options on the table to just kind of bully through these Pokemon on Shohei's side with pure offense. And I think as well, you want to try and remove that Amoongus from play before it can maybe go for some spores and start slowing down the Pokemon in your team. So I wouldn't be surprised to see that being the target here. Something like maybe even um, just the big damage coming through from an Astral Barrage. Terrestrialization coming straight out on the field. This is what we want to see, some sparkling in the arena as the Calyrex Shadow Rider goes into Terra Fairy here. The Terra Fairy is going to be so nice because Shohei's Incineroar actually does have knockoff. It's not going to be carrying a fire type attack like we normally see with something like the Flare Blitz. And so this Terra Fairy is going to be a very nice way to be able to protect it itself there as Adam starts to get set up here with those Calm Mind boosts. Knows that the end game right now could be Shadow Rider Calyrex versus Shadow Rider Calyrex. Honestly, love to see this. The parting shot comes through. We'll be able to lower those drops here. But the synergy support from that Rillaboo, making sure that the Calyrex was in a safe position to get that Calm Mind off doesn't have to worry about a potential score, as well as the fact that the Fairy Terror supports it against that Incineroar. The one nice thing for Shohei here is you have the utility to pivot something in. You've intimidated the Rillaboom, and now you can bring the Rillaboom of your very own in to now apply some pressure. And now that you're not a ghost type, you are vulnerable to fake out. That yes. is a move that this Rillaboom has that you could be able to help uh, actually try to get that fake out. But that would be nice if there weren't for that oh, yeah. Clover Cloak. And that's why Adam has made the adjustment to have a little bit more of a defensive item rather than an offensive component. It's definitely a good trick to have up your sleeve in a meta where we do have a lot of fake out on the field, particularly if you do, as you've said, have to give up your ghost typing. You don't want to leave yourself vulnerable. Absolutely. So no fake out on the field here to try to shut down the Shadow Rider Calyrex, Ooh. but that is not the same for the Rillaboom across the way. There's no fake out, though. It's just going to go for some type of attack as we see the Astral Barrage hit into both of these Pokemon. On. But thanks to that drop that we ended up seeing there from that parting shot, actually did help this Rillaboom survive up until the point that it got knocked out to the U-turn. Yeah, Rillaboom doesn't do many things better than Revenge, but it got intimidated, so it's like, I'm going to do a critical hit here with this U-turn and be able to KO the opposing Rillaboom while also enabling a little bit of pivoting on my trainer side. You can see the Pokemon in the back here for Adam, bringing Pokemon in like the Roaring Moon that's going to have the potential to, you know, help balance out a mirror match as we're seeing here, as well as a powerhouse like that Urshifu. He's taking his time to think about it, though. Yes, I mean, because that's the thing, right? You really want this Roaring Moon on the other side of something yeah. like that Shadow Rider Calyrex, just to know that you're not going to end up wasting a booster energy as well. We don't know what that's going to end up amplifying because we could see an attack or a speed, but look at the spore. Urshifu, kind of like an unfortunate target for that, knowing that maybe Shohei was kind of thinking that this really boom was actually going to disappear from the field. What a call. Yeah, really nice to be able to catch that there because that could have gone very sideways if the Rillaboom decided to stay in play. But it now allows Shohei to bring the Calyrex Shadow Rider on his side of the field into fruition here. One of the interesting things now is when you take a look at the Calyrex Shadow Rider on Adam's side, it's not going to be able to KO the Amoongus this turn with another Astral Barrage, which must be tempting to go into with the Calyrex on the field on Shohei's side. It is, but Adam is just going to remove this Urshifu from the field and not going to try to get these wake-up turns starting to stack up instead. Going to switch in this Roaring Moon, which we can get a chance to see what this booster energy is going to give a boost to, and it should be the speed that we are seeing here for this Roaring Moon. Yes, and this is what Adam needs here to be able to apply a lot of pressure. You can go for something like the Tailwind, you know, in the next turn once Roaring Moon's allowed to move and get the speed boost up, or you could always go for your boosted acrobatics now that you've lost your item and try and remove this Amoongus from play. The dark terrestrialization, though, very interesting onto that opposing Shadow Rider Calyrex. That's something that the Draining Kiss is going to be lying up. It would absolutely do that, but Ooh. I think it's going to be a great call because know that you might actually be able to survive that based on how you're trained, which provides a show this perfect opportunity to go for the nasty plot here. That's going to be plus two to this Shadow Rider Calyrex's special attack on his side.
This is where things get very interesting, though, because we don't know exactly how these Calyrexes are going to match up in terms of speed. Depending if that speed boost is enough for the Roaring Moon, it could always try and get a Tailwind up and kind of remove the fear of which Calyrex is going to go first and then apply a huge amount of damage. You can see why this Dark Terra is so good just to go for it regardless, because you know that this Roaring Moon also has a super effective Dark type attack with that knockoff, so you just want to make sure that you are terrestrializing in a defensive way to also make sure that you can withstand one of those attacks. But the Nasty Pop boost will be huge damage out here on the field. We're actually going to see Amoongus use this regenerator ability to get a little bit of HP back, come back onto the field a little bit later on to threaten on the field as the Incineroar throwing another Intimidate down. This is nice against that opposing Warring Moon, but of course we know that the Calyrex isn't going to worry about that at all. No, but that is going to help with this knockoff as you go into the Incineroar. Take a look at that. It should be doing more damage knowing that this Incineroar is actually holding an item. And that is such a little amount of damage. So the Incineroar are able to tank that, also provide that attack drop. And now this is time for this Shadow Runner Calyrex at Shohei side to go. That is an Astral Barrage into Boltari. It's not necessarily securing a knockout, but you can see here on the return of this, that's very little damage. Yes, the defensive terror type really working out there for Shohei. I have to say, though, the Roaring Moon going first in that match. Very interesting to see the speed come through. But as you've mentioned as well, a little damage from that knockoff thanks to the Intimidate. And now that you also do not have a Ghost Calyrex opposing you, that knockoff is really not going to be doing too much. If I was Adam now, I'd probably be thinking, hey, my Roaring Moon isn't being damaged. Let's use it for some support. Get a Tailwind up. Ensure that my Calyrex is going to be able to outspeed and try and get some damage. But even then, the Calyrex is underwhelming in the pressure. It's giving out. It is. I mean, you really want to try to get these Calm Mind boosts up. At the very yeah. least, you know that your special defense is going to be a little bit bolstered, but because of that parting shot earlier, you're still at a neutral special attack, not able to secure a knockout. It means that you are so aren't able to get that engine up and running to snowball that special attack stat. You want to get the Grim Naze rolling through, and it looks like Shohei might be within range of getting one in this particular turn. A defensive play by the Roaring Moon as the Amoongus joined the field. Here's so the Protect coming through as the Protect come through as well. Adam playing very defensively this turn. Yeah, you saw Shohei actually go for a little bit of a pop-off here. Was kind of hoping maybe that he'd be able to get some type of attack off onto the Shadow Rider Calyrex, but unfortunately not going to be able to do the job just yet. This Amoongus though being on the field is so problematic. There isn't really a great way for Adam to remove it at the moment. Maybe the acrobatics from this Roaring Moon could help out just to be able to deal that super effective damage. Knowing that the Terra has already been used on Shohei's side, but that Intimidate is it really going to be able to do enough here? You're going to need another critical hit, I think, to be able to get through that Amoongus, particularly at full health. And you also have the utility of your Shohei just to switch in the Incineroar again later and throw another Intimidate down. Amoongus doing what it does best, be providing a little bit of protection, going for that Rage Powder and drawing in all of these attacks. But no, Roaring Moon going, I'm not targeting you, I'm going for the Tailwind. Let's get the speed on my side and see what my partner can do. But you can see why this is so effective, because you do actually have that Draining Kiss heading into the Amoongus. So the Rage Powder able to redirect it away from a super effective hit into that dark Terra Shadow Rider Calyrex as Shohei continues to go all out on the offense at a plus two special attack. Oh! He's plenty to get a double knockout. That's going to be a sharp special attack increase. That's a plus four for this Shadow Rider Calyrex on Shohei's side. This Calyrex is mean on Shohei's side. It's got all the boosts, all the damage, and it's got the support. The one thing Adam has got going, though, is that Tailwind support. But whether it's going to be enough, well, it, I don't think it can be. You've got the Urshifu. How do you stop it? It hasn't been able to take one of its mandatory turns, mm -hmm. so there's no opportunity for it to actually wake up on this next turn that it hits the field. You are able to buy yourself a little bit of time. You do have the fake out here from this Rillaboom that could help, and you do have the Assault Vest. So yes. there is going to be a little bit of defensive capability from this Rillaboom to try to withstand some of these Astro Barrage, but you're plus four. Yes, the Assault Vest, I think, is going to be null and void at this point. The thing as well is you've got the Urshifu, you might love to be able to go for a close combat into that dark type Calyrex here, but you have to worry about the Moongus. You can't even taunt it because you have to taunt it twice to be able to shut down its redirectional support with Rage Powder. Particularly when Incineroar just keeps doing the Hokey Pokey and getting in and out here and throwing these Intimidates down against these physical attackers. Urshifu taken in that. Wake up, it's Worlds! Wake up, it is Worlds. That Wood Hammer, though, it's going to take one more of those to be able to actually get the damage down onto the Shadow Rider Calyrex, knock it out. But before it's able to do that, it's going to have to take the Thunder Astro Barrage. It is just going to be a one and knock out there onto that Rillaboom, essentially, with the Focus Ash allowing this Urshifu to hang on. But now this Incineroar is freshly on the field. There's another fake out in hand. And Shohei is going to shore up this very first game of this best of three. Honestly, how many boot, like, boosts is this 
Calyrex want to be able to get right now. I think if you're the opponent, Six. you're going to be haunted by this image forever. Definitely a way for Shohei to kick off the tournament. And Adam knowing, hey, game one's over. Let's reset. Let's focus and go to game two. Yes. Wow, what what a phenomenal performance so there by Shohei. Yeah. It, it was it was tough because at the very beginning you take a look at Adam being able to get that calm mindset up early yes. on by that Shadow Rider Calyrex. Feels like it was gonna have a little bit more staying power with that special defense boost and the special attack as well. Okay, if you're able to stack up a couple more of those, then then maybe you really have a good thing going for you. I agree. I think the way that Adam was able to kind of get that calm mind up, put him into a good position, but Shohei just read him like a book, was able to go for that parting shot, not only then kind of negate the attack drop, attack boost that it got, but then allow more pivoting in and out, particularly when it went for the Terra Fairy. It was unsusceptible um, to, you know, some damage coming through as well. I think for me, the key thing is that Dark Terror on Shohei's Calyrex, because that meant that it was just so... I would like to see it earlier rather than later so it can apply the pressure it needs, but... Tailwind's up. That's true. Let's see what's coming out on the field. And it, it looks a little familiar here, Rosemary. We've got Incineroar and the Calyrex Shadow Rider out on the field for both these trainers. It is looking like looking in a mirror. Oh yeah, quite literally. They're <laughs> even like matched across the field here. But you start to see the abilities coming through as well. The Intimidate's coming through. That's only really going to be able to affect the opposing Incineroars. And I wonder now if these Calyrexes are going to want to stay unterrestrialized. I think it's really important to know the order of which these Intimidates yes. actually go through. Adams ending up getting those Intimidates out first. It does seem like maybe that Incineroar is going to be a bit faster. So is that knowledge that Shohei is, in, is concerned about when kind of looking at, okay, well, where could Fake Out come through? Adams would be faster if you do try to fake out the Incineroar on the opposing side. I'd be almost tempted if I was Adam to just go for a parting shot here to just try and reduce the potential nasty plot coming through from the opposing side, particularly if it does want to terrestrialize, because if it goes into that Dark Terror, I really do not see a lot that Adam's Pokemon on the field right now can do to deal damage, other than the Draining Kiss, I guess. Well, the Draining Kiss is nice too, because that secondary effect is that you restore some of the HP from the damage that you're dealt out. So maybe you are able to, after one Calm Mind or something, be able to try to outpace the damage that Shogi is putting on the Exactly, and we're going to see the beautiful and bejeweled Calyrex Shadow Rider on the field once again going for that Dark Terror, making sure that it's not going to be taking super effective damage from an Astral Barrage here, wanting to make sure it's got its defensive capabilities in play to maybe go for one of those nasty plots, but it's going to be sparkles all around, Rose. It is, because that's going to be yet another terrestrialization onto Adams, and based on the terrestrialization, we can also get a more confirmation that Shohei Shadow Rider is faster. Yes, that's going to be the first to terrestrialize. We've often seen that move before Adams, and here's the nasty plot. We're going to get a lot of setup. Not only does it look faster, but it looks pretty ferocious to me. It's setups on both sides here. The Calm Mind coming through on Adams here, making sure that special defense and special attack are boosted up. Really, really interesting to see if the Incineroals, yes, they are going to be able to follow the speed of the Intimidates here. So the parting shot comes through on Adam's side. I wonder if it's going to be a parting shot on the opposing side as well. I think it would be a fantastic choice for Shohei to have made. Yeah. You expect that you're going to be doing some type of setup, then maybe you are predicting that Adam is trying to go for the same thing. And it would allow you to just make sure that you are keeping that opposing Shadow Rider Calyrex's stats in check. You'd be the only one with a boost in that case. Exactly, and it's interesting to see, you know, which Pokemon are going to come through here because that Roaring Moon is primed to try and come out and set that Tailwind up so that your Calyrex Shadow Rider is able to gain that speed advantage here in this mirror. You don't currently have to worry about a, an Amoongus on the field, so you're going to be able to, you know, just focus in on supporting the Calyrex rather than having to deal out the damage. And there's the speed boost again from the booster energy. Yep, and it is going to be a parting shot. So mirrored turn sort of on the same side, but what the Shohei actually tried to bring out to take this Incineroar's place. The fact that Adams is first, you now get a good idea of like, okay, well, I know there's a roaring move. Yes. So how am I going to be able to counter that? I ended up bringing the Rillaboom in the last um, the last game, I want to say, that does have the fake out. Oh, no, the Amoongus, sorry. There was a grass type. I well, had the wrong They were one. both there. They were both there. Yeah. But I think the Amoongus could be the really pivotal Pokemon here, being able to go for something like the redirection and draw in a potential draining kiss. But it is going to be that Rillaboom. Uh, Rillaboom here makes a lot of sense. Now you have the opportunity to actually fake something out. If you think that this Roaring Moon is going to be more of the problem, you could go for that. But you have to keep in mind that both of Adam's Pokemon on the field right now do have the opportunity and option to go for Protect. 
Yes, be able to go for a defensive play, and we know that Adam isn't afraid of doing that. It's whether Shohei wants to read into that, make a really bold play, and go for something like a Nella Nasty Floor, but he doesn't need to. He's got the momentum right now. You could always just try and get some damage on the ball with something like the Astral Barrage. Just try and get these Pokemon into a prime position to be KO'd, maybe even with a Grim Snarl, um, Grim Nay boost, but you can also allow your Rillaboom to shine. There's no fake out coming through, though. The Acrobatics comes through, not enough to be able to get the knockout, however, as the Astral Barrage from Shohei's is going to come through, connect on both the opposing Pokemon. No KO, though, but of course, the Calyrex Shadow Rider is not going to be able to take another one of those in the next turn. No, but I mean, the fact that we do see this Astral Barrage in return with the Rule Boom already taking as much damage as it has, we're not going to be able to see what move it is going for in this turn. It just gets knocked out for all of its troubles. And because of how low it was, it's actually going to give over a Grimnade boost to Adams. So we're kind of back up on par here. Plus one for both of these Shadow Rider Calyrex's special attacks. In both games one and two, Adam has very kind of cleanly been able to remove the Rillaboom on the opposing side from the field. Shohei's Rillaboom really hasn't done much other than set up the terrain. The interesting thing in this next turn, we know that that Roaring Moon is faster. It can go for a Tailwind, try and get some speed up on Adam's side of the field, enabling that Calyrex Shadow Rider with its new Grimnade boost to be able to put some pressure onto the field. Maybe even get in range of a KO, but I think due to the dark typing, it's going to be really difficult. Maybe at Draining Kiss here, particularly with the Terra Fairy boosting up those Fairy type moves, you might be able to just get the knockout, but if an Amoon comes into that slot, the redirection is going to really put a thorn in your side. It's going to be very close, though, to whether Adams actually even gets a chance to move. That was a lot of damage that came was. there from the Astral Barrage, just about half. So it could be Ooh. a bit of a roll, maybe. And I don't even think you're particularly worried about... Uh, I think, actually, if you're showing, you're not particularly worried about the amount of HP that this Shadow Rider Calyrex has. Despite the fact you might not actually be able to flinch the target, you're still faster. You could end up going for something like a fake out into the Shadow Rider Calyrex if you predict that maybe this Roaring Moon is not going to actually try to go for Tailwind. Do you know what I like? Is the Incinero on Shohei's side is running Helping Hand. That could that potentially be what the Calyrex needs to be able to get the knockout on the opposing side. But not today on the Calyrex on Adam's side. It has gone for the Protect. The Fake Out actually going down into the Roaring Moon, allowing the Calyrex on Shohei's side to try and go for another one of these Astral Barrages. Oh, the Roaring Moon. We saw how much it took that turn prior. It does not have any additional boost on Shohei's side, oh. but it's not actually going to be enough to secure the knockout onto this Roaring Moon. That Protect, though, is going to be very beneficial for the Shadow Rider Calyrex to get a little bit of extra terrain healing yes. so maybe you're a little bit more confident if you're adam that you would survive another astral barrage i think if it's a regular astral barrage fine yes adam's calyrex is going to be able to hang on there but if there is the potential for that helping hand that's where the momentum could really swing and show his favor particularly as we know that calyrex shadow rider is currently the faster at the moment it all depends if Rory moon wants to go for that tailwind and try and even the score Adam is a very big decision to make here, though. Do you try to go for another combine to see if you can actually try to withstand this Astral Barrage with the Helping Hand with something like the Tailwind? Oh, Ooh, wait, there's actually opportunity. just a protect here. Yeah, this is a big opportunity here for Adam. Whether he's going to be able to capitalize on it, let's see. The Tailwind is in place, so the speed is on Adam's side. But whether you can get that special defense and the special attack boost up with the Calm Mind, it is now in play. Incineroar might go for a parting shot, might try and bring down the special attack, but that special defense is staying where it's at, boosted. Yeah, even though you do see that uh, Harding Shot come through, you are able to continue to mitigate some of the Shadow Rider Calyrex's special attack. You still have to deal with the fact that it's under Tailwind now. Yeah. It is going to be faster than you. That Roaring Moon also going to be faster. And there's no additional option for Fake Out that Shohei can switch in. That Rillaboom has already gone down. So what is going to be this fourth and final Pokemon for Shohei in this game too? Going to be good information for Adam so he can pivot the Pokemon around to see which formidable threat is there. It's got to be something to support this Shadow Rider Calyrex. And it's going to be that Amoongus. It has the potential to go for these Rage Powders, draw in some attacks. Obviously, we know the Roaring Moon's been intimidated and it's kind of on its last legs. Another Astral Barrage will be able to KO it. But the Calyrex Shadow Rider on Adam's side, if you go for the Astral Barrage, that's going to deal some decent damage, but I don't think it's getting the knockout into the opposing Calyrex here. No, I, I mean, it's going to be it's going to be really close, right? Maybe this Amoongus is able to hang on through something, Ooh. but it's just a protect. Protect from the Amoongus. And because it's lower, there's actually not going to be a protect coming through from this Shadow Rider Calyrex, predicting that this Acrobatics from the Roaring Moon was trying to target down this Amoongus, but can this Astral Barrage actually do it? Shoei is banking on the fact that it will not as the Astral Barrage plus one is not going to be enough, not nearly enough to secure the knockout. So an Astral Barrage in return, we know it should not be able to knock out this Shadow Rider Calyrex with those plus two combine boosts, but it's enough to get this Roaring Moon and yet another special attack boost with that Grimnay. 
This is the thing, Roaring Moon did its job in terms of setting up the Tailwind, but by going down, you give the Grimnade boost to the opposing Calyrex, that's going to make things a little bit more difficult. Even if you have plus two special defense, it's still going to hurt coming through with the boost. And how do you deal with the Amoongus? Amoongus is sitting on the field, very pretty, full HP. You have the Incineroar. That is one way to be able to try and deal with it. You could always go for something like the Flare Blitz here, but there's still the Incineroar in the back for Shohei as well that can apply Intimidate and make it more difficult for the Incineroar on Adam's side. Yeah, it's also important to note, though, too, that we do actually uh, have kind of like a kind of difference in strategy here from Adam. He ended up opting to leave the Urshifu at home. That would have been really nice just to have as an extra. Still nothing, Rosemary. Call. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I mean, uh, <laughs> it's a little too early for that Urshifu at the moment. But you're right, though. It's such a key physical attacker, and having that close combat would be really, really nice. But when you have the support of something like the Amoongus, it makes it very difficult for Urshifu to shine. So some really nice adjustments here. Adjustments on the field, actually. Getting rid of those boosts and going, I need to intimidate this opposing um, Incineroar. And that's exactly what Shohei is doing, knowing that the Calyrex Shadow Rider, and when Tailwind has ended, can come back and be formidable. But here we go, the Astral Barrage. Decent damage into the Amoongus. Another one will KO. Yeah, that's the other thing, right? Is that you do have the opportunity to go for Rage Powder, but the fact that Astral Barrage is that spread attack, you know your own Shadow Rider is not going to be able to withstand that. So instead, you get rid of the boost. It's a very big risk to take, but you are hopeful that the Tailwind is going to expire. Uh, but the Amoongus, yeah, getting knocked out for its troubles does mean that Shoei is on his final two Pokemon for this game, too. I like that, though. You've dealt with the Amoongus. It's gone. You're now forcing the Calyrex Shadow Rider, the last two remaining Pokemon on Shohei's side, to come back into the field. And it has had to forgo its boosts here at this point as well. That nasty plot, the Grimnay, is gone. It is gone. And it is a still a pretty bulky Pokemon, though. So if you're worried a little bit about this Incineroar, maybe you're still able to survive a Flare Blitz, but there's still one more turn of Tailwind. A little bit predictable, I think. Maybe Shohei, knowing that he might have to go for something like a Protect on this Calyrex, try to get the speed back in his favor. Uh, but the, the Incineroar here still is able to try to get a little bit of done, stuff done. Shoei Incineroar does have a knockoff. It has the Helping Hand again, like you mentioned. So Helping Hand at the end of the day might still be beneficial, but Shoei being on his last two Pokemon here is a very tough ask as you take a look at this Rillaboom in the back coming in with yep. full HP. Yeah, bringing that terrain back to the field as well to help out the Calyrex and apply something like the Fake Up Pressure going into the next turn because I think Shohei might protect it, exactly what we're seeing, stall out the last turn of Tailwind and allow your Calyrex to be faster, but then the Fake Up in the next turn is going to be able to stop it in its tracks. Here comes through another Astral Barrage, obviously only going to be able to target down into that opposing Incineroar. Do a little bit of damage, but a little is a lot at this point because another one of those, particularly paired up with anything that Rillaboom wants to throw through, is going to be able to get the knockout on that opposing Incineroar. It all adds up. Even just a little bit of chip damage coming through from the knockoff, it does remove this Covert Cloak. Not really a big deal anymore yeah. in this matchup because you don't have Fake Out available anymore or any other sort of uh, uh, secondary, effect secondary effects coming effects, through. Right, exactly. Um, I mean, looking at this right now, yes, it kind of looks telegraphed. You can put the Fake Out down into that opposing Calyrex Shadow Rider, go for another Astral Barrage, the Incineroar on Shohei's side doesn't have Protect either, so it's going to have to take the full brunt force of one of these attacks. Looks like the Double Protect failed there on the opposing side as the Fake Out comes through, connects, and stops it in its tracks. The double damage coming through here, targeting on both Pokemon, going to be able to get a knockout on the Calyrex, and then it's just a matter of time for the little kitty cat. It's, it's not going to be able to get through all of this. There's no Flare Blitz on Shohei's Incineroar, so no way to hit this Rillaboom for super effective damage. And even if you are able to go for a knockoff here, still just not quite enough to distribute the damage across the board. So that is 1-1. One, one. We are going into a game number three here for our very first match of the 2024 Pokemon World Championships. That makes it very exciting. It shows the actually mastery caliber of play from these trainers, particularly the way Adam was able to adapt in that game too. Shohei locking on the forfeit saying, let's go to a game three and see who is going to win this set. Wow, great adjustment there from yeah. Adam, leaving the Urshifu at home. Love it. that he just had actually cycling through the eliminates. We'll see how either of these players decides to adjust for Shohei. It is going to be an adjustment of leaving the Incineroar either on the bench or in the back. And there's Amoongus now on the field instead. Adam trying to go back through with that game two game plan. I love this coming out from Shohei here, knowing that the Amoongus was so disruptive in game one. Let's bring it out front and center to already get up to some shenanigans. You could try and go for some redirection here. You can just try and support your opposing Calyrex. But the Incineroar, a really nice play coming in here for Adam. It's almost forcing Shohei to have to go for the Terra Dark or a Protect onto his own Calyrex to stop the Calyrex on Adam. 
Adam side going for a free Astral Barrage here. But do you continue, you know, what do you, is there, do you want to try to do something a little bit different? You could go for the parting shot in the same way, but you know the Amoongus also has the opportunity to just Rage Powder away from that. Uh, there isn't actually a Grass Terra available from either of these Pokemon. Incineroar for Adam is going to have a Terra Water. Uh, so there is not really a great way to actually try to get around the Rage Powder or the Spores. Exactly, and you kind of want to think maybe if that Calyrex Shadow Rider that likes to go for those nasty plots wants to also go for the Terra Dark, you could even catch it with a cheeky fake out, but it's not to be. It's leaving the field here for Shohei, going to be nice and protected in the back where it will have its time to shine, and instead is replaced with the Intimidating Incineroar. Again, going to be weakening the offensive pressure on the opposing Incineroar, but also allowing Amoongus to have a little bit more flexibility. And it's also able to resist the Astral Barrages. Yes, if you're exactly. expecting that to come through from the Shadow Rider Calyrex, and it's another way that you're able to try to withstand some of that offense. But as we've seen from Adam in the game number one and game number two, he's wanted to try to get those combine boosts up right away for this Shadow Rider. But there's the fake out going down into what was the Calyrex Shadow Rider, going to be kind of null and void into the switching in Incineroar as the Calm Mind does go up. This is risky. The Amoongus has the potential to go for a Spore and just kind of shut down this opposing Pokemon. And if it does, that would be absolutely huge. The Spore goes into the Shadow Rider Calyrex from Adam. And even though you're able to get that Calm Mind boost up, it's immediately put to sleep. At least it's going to be able to get its turns in early when the opposing Calyrex isn't on the field. You have the Incineroar now. You're a fairy type, so you don't have to worry so much about things like the knockoff coming through. We saw what negligible damage that was able to deal before. But then if you do lose your Covert Cloak, that's where Fake Out can kind of roll into the match as it goes through. If I was these trainers right now, if I was Adam, I'd want to try and find a way to get rid of this Amoongus as fast as possible. You have to kind of rely on your Incineroar, but again, Incineroar in a position where it can be put to sleep in this turn as well if it doesn't want to get off the field, but there's no safe switch in other than potentially a Rillaboom. Uh, even then, right? Do you really want to put yourself in a position where you're sort of off cadence? Mm -hmm. Is the Rillaboom okay in that position when you think that maybe there's a Shadow Rider Calyrex waiting <laughs> in the wings to just peek its head back out before the Shadow Rider can wake up on Adam's side, but it is going to be the Rillaboom. You don't want to let another Pokemon go to bed. It is too early for that in this World Championships, and you got to make sure that the Shadow Rider wakes up. There's the mandatory turn. Try to get it out of here, but the parting shot into that slot is also going to make sure that Shohei can get another pivot in. Yep, insult to injury here as the Incineroar able to get off the field. It's not running Flare Blitz, so it's not something that could really apply pressure to that opposing Rillaboom. So it's nice here for Shohei to adjust things, bring in a Pokemon that can apply some offensive pressure and maybe even capitalize on the fact that this opposing Calyrex hasn't been allowed its boost, and you now are in a position where you can start dealing out some big damage. Particularly if it keeps sleeping, you could go for another nasty plot here. You could, but... This Calyrex is just going to continue to, to wait back there. It's going to be the Rillaboom once again here for Shohei. It's the adjustment that we saw in game number two. But this time around, when you take a look at the Rillaboom, you know that it has U-turn. You can actually just try to get some super effective damage down into the Rillaboom on the other side. Unfortunately, it is just going to be the fake out into that slot so we don't get a chance Ooh. to see it. But the wake up here from the Shadow Rider on Adams is going to get the double damage down into both of these Pokemon. There's no Assault Vest here on Showway's Rillaboom. Try to withstand it, but the Sludge Bomb just whittle away at this very type of Shadow Rider. It can whittle away, but it's even though it's super effective, it's not dealing a monumental bit of damage, particularly with the Grassy Train on the field, being able to allow the Calyrex Shadow Rider to regroup a little bit. The issue is, however, can the Calyrex Shadow Rider do anything before the opposing Amoongus is able to put it back to sleep here? Yes, with the amount of damage that has come through so far, not necessarily. So protect that we see Adam hovering over would be a great way to be able to protect itself from that. Rillaboom just leaves the field, though. I think it has to. Yes, it's an aurora. It can bring yep. that back in, got the Intimidate drop down onto the Rillaboom once again. Kind of force Adam into this game of chicken. Do you want to <laughs> try to get this Rillaboom off the field, try to reset those Intimidate drops, and leave something else a bit more vulnerable? Shohei really looks in the driving seat now, though, because, yes, the Rillaboom's going to get off the field. It's Intimidated, so the U-turn really doesn't do too much. And you have just protected only Calyrex Shadow Rider. That has dropped its ghost typing. So a fake out from the opposing Incineroar may be able to come through once you knock it off as well with the um, a knockoff, obviously, on the Incineroar, just removing that Covert Cloak from play. The Rillaboom on Shohei's side, sitting in a very vulnerable spot. You've already mentioned a lot about how the Assault Vest isn't in play, so it makes it very difficult for that Rillaboom to have longevity on the field. Spore coming through, Amoongus doing what it does best, just trying to shut down this opposing Calyrex. And this is what I like from Adam here. You brought the Incineroar on, you could choose your fake out target here. I think if you're going to shut down that opposing Amoongus, that would be best. You don't want a Spore, and you can maybe allow that Calm Mind to come through.
could, or you can even just potentially secure the knockout with something oh, yeah, like true. the Astral Barrage. At this point, I think it would be a little bit close, too close for comfort. So Adam opting to try to get in a bit more of that special defense capability for that Shadow Rider with some full HP. There's also no Terra yet used on Shohei's side. I think that's, that's a very important distinction between the first two games that we saw. Yes, because he got that Calyrex out there right at the beginning of this game three, unlike the previous turns. The fake out going down into that pesky little mushroom there. As the fake out comes through on the opposing Incinera as well into this. Oh, no, it's actually the knockoff getting rid of the item there. Calmind is coming through. This is what Adam likes to do with this Calyrex, just trying to negate a potential parting shot. But tears, particularly as there wasn't one in this particular turn, this boost is going to be in play going into the next turn as well. So you're right here, Rosemary. Going for something like the Astral Barrage could really put a threat on the potential of that Amoongus. It's such a tough call, though, right? Show is considering maybe I can just go for the fake out. I think that would at least be doing a little bit. Um, if, if I'm lucky, I'm able to get the fake out into the Incineroar, but it was also the play that could have parting shot in that turn. Very, very tough call to make. We're really going to go for the fake out. It's going to be a very moot turn here for Shohei as you look at the Samukas and Incineroar. Yes, I think the Incineroar on Shohei's side is in a very interesting spot here because you could always potentially, you know, switch it out, bring the Rillaboom in and just kind of, I don't know, let it go down to be able to bring an Intimidate back in later on. But it's all about this Calyrex right now. Being able to go for this Astral Barrage, not going to be able to get any damage down onto the opposing Amoongus as you're able to connect down onto the Incineroar. Significant chunk of damage, but really not putting it in the danger zone as the Incineroar on Adam's side decides to, you know, make a little bit of a switch, pivot things around. The Amoongus on Shohei's side, I'm not going to lie, I would not be surprised to see that leave the field, get a little bit more HP back with its Regenerator ability and rejoin a little bit later on. But it's what you're going to do in its place. No fourth Pokemon revealed to Shohei yet from Adam. We can see what is in the back here, but you're always looking for an opportunity to actually get that piece in at the right moment. A parting shot here from Shohei's Incineroar is going to allow it to pivot off of the field while also dropping that special attack stat here from this Shadow Rider. There's a couple of options. Like, as you said, you could bring in the Rillaboom if you wanted. You do have the opportunity to go for Fake Out into the other slot. Uh, but I think it's time, yeah, bring back out the Shadow Rider. I think you're okay knowing that there isn't actually going to be uh, something on the other side that's going to do super effective damage or something like the Terra. Also, the speeds haven't been altered here by a Tailwind from the Roaring Moon. So if you're Shohei, you're going to be pretty confident that your Calyrex is going to be in a prime position to start getting some damage on the ball. Particularly when you've got the Amoongus there, you can always try a little bit of redirectional support and allow a Nasty Plot to go up. But the issue is, if you are the Rillaboom just joining here on the field, you could always try and go for the Fake Out into that opposing Amoongus and once again protect your Calyrex. But Amoongus getting out of there going, I need to regenerate some HP. And also, maybe if you're bringing in a Pokemon from the back like the um, Incineroar, you can throw down that Intimidate onto the Rillaboom once again. What a tough call, though. You have to assume that Shohei is going to try to go for the Terrestrialization here, not having the Amoongus to try to have keep to. it safe. You want to know that you're able to kind of withstand this oncoming damage in your own right. The only problem is if you do see something like that Draining Kiss, you are a bit vulnerable to that. You have no Rage Powder to try to redirect that away, but it's just going to have to be a nasty play. You want to try to outpace the Shadow Rider Calyrex on Adam's side. It's going to be the Astral Barrage, though, coming through, connecting on both the opposing um, Pokemon here. Again, really negligible damage, particularly considering there's a nasty plot on the opposing side. If I was Adam, I'd be quaking in my little hooves right now from the damage potential that can come back across the field at you right now. This has been a bit of a slower game. We're really waiting for this opportunity, uh, kind of like this opening. Yes. Both of these players are looking for the right opportunity to try to just put the put the pressure on the gas. Well, there's no safety net, right? This is game three. The winner of this game wins the set. So there is no room for error. It's Pokemon World Championships. It's game three of round one. You want to set the tone for your tournament journey here. Fake out on the Incineroar. Could actually try to stop this Shadow Rider in its tracks. Joey's worked so hard to try to get these nasty plot boosts onto this force. We would actually start to get itself into this race. But Adam too, though. Adam's been working really hard on these Calm Mind boosts. It's not just for the special attack. The critical thing is the special defense boost. Yes. Because you're against such a formidable special attacker in the form of the Calyrex, you need to make sure that even as the fairy type, you're going to be able to hang on to these astral barrages and make sure that you can deal significant damage, even with like a double up potential from something like the Incineroar, and get rid of the threat on the opposing side. Speaking of threats, Amoongus is back on the field, though. It's a defensive play from Shohei comes through in the form of the Protect. Smart. You're going to be able to bypass that fake out. Yep. 
That way, you're not actually going to leave yourself vulnerable to taking too much damage. The Amoongus gets a chance to switch back in. You're not worried about it taking too much damage. Calm mind, though. Oh, it's starting to get a little bit out of hand here. This is the third combine that Adam's been able to go for in this game number three, which means that that special defense has three stages on top of it. I honestly feel like in this game three, we've been like climbing up the hill or like the roller coaster. You're going up, 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 and we're about to Drop hit the peak and roll out with the damage here. The fact that these calm mines are in play, the fact that you've also got the nasty plot on the opposing side means the momentum is going to be key. Something like the Astral Barrage coming through on Adam's side, follow up by a potential flare blitz into that Amoongus could be a key to success. But Amoongus playing very defensively, going for the protect as on Shohei's, the faster Calyrex is able to go for the Astral Barrage. First of all, connects down, decent damage, but no KOs. No KOs just yet, but it looks like it could be very close onto something like that Incineroar as the Astral Barrage in return. It's going to come down to what this Incineroar is able to do on the outside of this what, that Shadow Rider Calyrex is on his last legs. It's a Flare Blitz into that slot. Not ready yes. through the Protect. It's enough to get the knockout. That is going to be Shoei losing his Restricted in this third and final game of the set. It's down and out. It left the field at the beginnings. Come back in. Got set up, but just wasn't able to get the knockouts here. A sigh of celebration there for the Incineroar on the field. Of course, it's not going to be able to get any boost from this, but it certainly swings the momentum into Adam's favor. The Amoonga sitting very vulnerable now to a very similar play. The Astral Barrage and the Flare Blitz coming through. Rillaboom, same boat here because it is not running that assault fest and you can't even fake out the opposing calyrex thanks to the covert cloak covert cloak is still intact that is going to be a big problem here for shohei to try to get through the rest of the shadow rider calyrex's hp pool still sitting at half gonna be getting a little bit more recovery as well as this grassy terrain is still active on the field but it's all about what's in the back here. Adam sees and out, sees the win at the end of the tunnel. And that is with the super effective damage that this Roaring Moon might be able to dish out. And honestly, I love that Flare Blitz play going down into the Calyrex, because if Amoongus redirects it, it redirects it. But if you protect it, then you're not going to be dealing damage. Fantastic play. Incineroar taking a little bit of a break as the Calyrex also goes for the protect. The grassy terrain has come back onto the field as well. Going to be able to get that recovery up, give the Calyrex a little bit more longevity on the field here. As the Spore comes through of course it's going down into a really boom it's a cross type it's not going to do any connecting here it's still something though you have to hope that it's yes. going to be anything on the other side the incineroar anything but the really boom yes <laughs> and literally anything but even in something in the back you know that it's going to be susceptible to that fake out or to that spore so now yeah. what's next right for adam it's still about trying to make sure that you've got the shadow rider calyrex able to pin and finish up the game Yes, and again, if you're Adam, you have all four Pokemon remaining. So you have a little bit of flexibility, particularly when you have utility with something like the U-Turn and the parting shots on your kind of Rillaboom and Incineral pivot Pokemon. So you can keep applying pressure with these Intimidates to the opposing Rillaboom or just completely shutting them down here as well with the Fake Out. Astro Barrage. If this is not enough to clean up this Amoongus and there's an opportunity to go for the Spore into this Shadow Rider Calyx, give yourself a little bit of breathing room. But as that Astral Barrage is enough to knock out Shohei's uh, Rillaboom, that is going to be just two Pokemon left here. Spore does connect. That is important. But it's just the Incineroar left to try to deal damage. You know what? This gets very dicey here. The Incineroar on Shohei's side doesn't have Flare Blitz. It's only kind of attacking move. Other than Fake Out is Knock Off. And that's going down into a Fairy Pokemon on the opposing side. That's not going to be... so doing... little. Exactly. It's going to be doing, like, no damage. The Rillaboom as well, not going to be worrying too much, particularly when there is such low HP on that Incineroar. The Rillaboom on Adam's side, yes, it can't do too much to the opposing Incineroar, but you can clean up into that Amoongus with something like the U-Turn. You can maybe try and go for just, I don't know, Wood Hammer damage into the Incineroar, or even just the U-Turn yourself. But there's the forfeit. Shohei concedes. He is going to concede there. And Adam, Sherpui is going to win the very first Swiss match that we have here in Dana.